Hi, I'm Mike from Mixed Motorsport Electrics. Uh, this video is going to be showing you some of the products we sell and how to identify them. Uh, here at Ricks, we don't want you to be intimidated by motorcycle electronics. And it's true that some problems are pretty tough to diagnose and fix. But if you've got a basic understanding of motorcycle mechanics and a good manual, you can pretty much fix most of the electrical problems yourself. Now, hopefully this video will help you out if you've got any confusion on what the components are. So let's get started. All right, to get started off, uh, what we have here are the three, um, the three basic systems on how a motorcycle ATV watercraft uh, gets its power to run things like the ignition system, the lights, uh, charge the battery, things like that. Uh, first up, we have an automotive style alternator. Um, this is popular among some Kawasaki, some Suzuki, uh, BMW, a lot of other stuff. It's basically just a smaller version of the alternator that you have in your car. Uh, stator, rotor, rectifier, regulator are all self-contained in the unit and it runs off the engine. Uh, these two components are from a permanent magnet uh, system. This is the rotor, this is the stator. Uh, the rotor is attached to the crankshaft, spins around the stator, makes power. Now this is common in, this is the most common system on uh, street bikes today. And over here we have what's called a field excited unit. This one again, here's the stator, and this one's the rotor. Again, the rotor is attached to the crankshaft, it spins inside the stator. Uh, there is no permanent magnet on this, it's an electromagnet, the rotor. That's the biggest difference. Now obviously, your components might not look exactly like this, but this should give you a rough idea on what you got. So again, automotive style alternator. Permanent magnet rotor and stator. And field excited rotor and stator. All right, what we have here is a stator off an off-road bike. Uh, similar to a lot of ATV, watercraft, snowmobile stators. Uh, the big coils on the outside, right here, the thicker wire, that's the lighting coil. It uses It powers the, obviously, the lights on if you have a battery, this is what charges it. Right here, the other coil, is the pulse coil or source coil. This powers the ignition. Right here, mounted on the plate, off the stator, is the trigger coil. Uh, this uh, affects timing. Some models have more than one pulse coil, some have more than one trigger. Okay, here we have a couple of rectifier regulators. What these do is they take the current coming out of the stator, which is AC volts, and they convert it over to DC volts to charge the battery, run the lighting systems. Uh, you can see these two models right here have cooling fins on them. Some models don't. These two have harnesses coming off instead of plugs directly on the unit. So, like I said, yours may not look exactly like these, but it should be something similar. All right, what we have here are a CDI box and ignition coils. The ignition coils are what power the spark plugs. These are pretty basic. Uh, most of them have either one or two leads coming off to go to the spark plugs. Some bikes have the ignition coils built right into the spark plug caps. So that's the ignition coil. This is a CDI box, or some people like to call it a computer. Now this handles all the timing and the running of the motorcycle. All right, now we have a starter motor and a starter solenoid. This is a starter motor. This is off a Polaris two-stroke four-wheeler. Um, usually one battery post on it. They can either be a permanent magnet or field excited starter motors. Some have the starter clutch or solenoid built right onto it. But these are almost always bolted right up to the motor. This is what, when you hit the start button, this is what you're using. So it starts the bike up. Uh, quick note, this is off, like I said, a Polaris uh, two-stroke four-wheeler. We get these in sometimes for rebuild. And look on the bottom of it right here. This bolt, this bolt is missing. Uh, where this starter motor is mounted on most four-wheelers, 
is right in front of the motor, way down the bottom. So when this bolt's gone, all the mud and water and all that fun stuff to drive through gets shot right up in here and it wears the starter motor out prematurely. So just a quick tip, you want to always make sure that bolt's there. The starter solenoid, uh, they're usually either round or square. They have two posts. Uh, they come from the battery. One comes from the battery, one goes to the starter motor. And then they have either plug or leads coming off it that go to the starter switch. Uh, a lot of times when these go bad, people like to take a screwdriver and jump the two battery posts. We don't really recommend that. But this is the starter solenoid, like I said. Yours might not look exactly like this, but it should be similar. Alright, that's it for this video. Hopefully if you had any confusion about some of the stuff, we were able to clear it up for you. As usual, if you have any questions, you can email us at ricksmotorsportelectrics.com. Um, remember, motorcycle electronics are not... It's not, it's not magical. They're, you can figure out the problems. Um, it's nothing to be that intimidated by. Get your manual, take a look at it, and hopefully we were able to help you out. Thanks for watching.